Hello colleagues, here we are over one year on and still in lockdown. We could never have imagined that all of last year would be spent working and learning remotely. But we did it, and well done to all of the staff of IT Sligo for making this happen. Today, we welcome back a small number of students for essential on-site learning activities to support the completion of their academic year. Also back in campus are the academic and technical support staff who are needed to provide practical lessons to these students in our labs, workshops and studios. While still operating under Level 5 restrictions, we've been allowed to facilitate this limited on-campus activity to support our students to complete this semester so that they can graduate and begin their working careers or continue on with their studies next year. It would be great to see a limited number of students returning to inject some youthful energy back into what are eerily quiet corridors and classrooms. I know this move will cause some to feel a level of anxiety, but this has been done with the utmost safety and health precautions in place. While it has been eerily quiet on campus these past few months, the Institute remains impressively active. Our weekly newsletter edited by Aidan Hohey is always packed with virtual events and staff and student achievements, which clearly demonstrate that we're very much still open for business. During this semester and last, Healthy Campus through Yvonne Roach has been incredibly active with yoga, mental health talks, and of course, this month's Marchathon, which I know many of you are taking part in, even I am. On the 8th of March, we had a very active International Women's Day with initiatives from our staff and students shared online and through our social media. Over the same week, we had our first Green Week, which included five days of competitions, workshops and talks, ending with a very interesting discussion on how our Institute will look on our 100th anniversary. I want to update you on the state of play of our TU ambitions. Our relations within the CUA have never been stronger, with approximately 150 staff directly involved in various working groups and subgroups, and many more colleagues collaborating on various activities ranging from research projects to business process alignment. After a period of extensive consultation, we've completed a comprehensive submission document, and Deloitte have confirmed that we have currently achieved the metrics to become a TU. Significant progress indeed. We have been in negotiations for some time with INTUC. This is the umbrella name used by the three branches of TUI. To achieve agreement on a memorandum of understanding, intensive negotiations have been underway since last November and both sides hope to find an agreeable solution. With the negotiations scheduled to conclude by this Friday, and the MOU ready for ballot before Easter. Pending a successful outcome of the ballot on the MOU, we hope to submit our application for TU designation by the end of April. Our target date for designation as a TU is January 2022, and there's much to do to be ready to become part of a single university. That is, of course, assuming we get the ministerial approval following the assessment by the external panel, which you still have to face. Rest assured, much of the preparatory work to become a TU in January 22 is currently underway, including initial preparations for the panel visit and engagement with the CUA EduCampus Forum on our systems integration process. Achieving TU designation is the transformational change that our students, staff, and this region deserves. I sincerely hope I will soon be in a position to announce that we will be proceeding to submit our application so that we can remain on target to become a TU in January 2022. On the matter of incorporation of St Andrews College into IT Sligo, the department consider the TU project to take precedent over all other developments, and they have put on hold the approval of the incorporation of St Andrews College until our TU submission has been considered by the external panel. This will make it even tighter to incorporate St Andrews into ID Sligo before we become a TU, 
which is our preferred approach. So we're trying to work on this behind the scenes. Last week, we heard that IT Sligo, in partnership with Sligo County Council, was successful in a 28.7 million euro bid to establish a city campus as a new cultural quarter between the North Bridge Street and the Keys. Under this URD funding, the Institute will partner with the Council in developing a new library facility as a cultural, technology, creative and enterprise resource for the region. This is the first such partnership in Ireland between local authorities and higher education in the development of a learning and ideas generation facility for the broader community. Well done to Chris O'Malley for leading out in this. Before I go, I want to say a few words about another colleague, Evelyn Glynn. Evelyn has been our front of house person for many years and has been greeting us all with a friendly smile and reassured calmness for many years. Evelyn will be retiring next month and I want to thank her most sincerely on behalf of the Institute for all of her kindness and commitment and for her warm daily welcome and wisdom. We will miss you and we wish you well in your retirement, Evelyn. Thank you all.